Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to give you a glimpse into my world, both in terms of understanding more about narcissism and psychopathy, but also getting a glimpse into the world around Tudor Towers. Here, you're seeing the view across some of the land, which is to the rear of my property. Uh, this is mine, where I will go walking through up to the trees that you can see in the distance. There's a section which contains, you might just be able to see a cow, which I uh, lease to a local farmer as ultimately, other than walking through it when I'm taking a morning constitutional, I have no other use for the land other than to look at it. Anyway, that's all by the by, because we're here to talk about Omid Scobie. Yes, the improbably named plastic face lieutenant who is chatting shit. Scobie is a runt of an individual who's carved out some form of living by wedging his nose firmly up the arse crack of Harry's wife and clinging on for dear life. She doesn't give a rat's ass about him, although he will mistakenly think that he's well in. This was, of course, as a consequence of the fact that she clearly liaised with him and the now in hiding Carolyn Durant when it came to writing the god-awful Finding Freedom or, more accurately, Funding Freedom, Finding Dollars. Scobie was utilised in the position of a lieutenant, whereby, in effect, Harry's wife's diaries were passed on to him in some either written or spoken form, perhaps a combination of both, for the purposes of then allowing him to write about that in that publication. As you know from the parody that I did of it, it's clear that much of the detail that was provided by Omid Scobie could only have come from Harry's wife. And therefore he is utilised as a lieutenant to enable her to assert control by proxy. He's in effect a useful idiot. She has no sense of loyalty to him, would readily throw him under the bus and has done so a couple of times. But lapdog that he is, he comes running back for more because it also serves a purpose for him, because outside of having that connection, what does he really have? A penchant for cosmetic surgery and making himself look plastic, and beyond that, basically just trading on gossip and pieces of information. However, he has been chatting shit in accordance with the coronation as a necessity of supporting his handler and of obeying her instructions when it came to trying to smear the Prince and Princess of Wales. Those of you who watch the coronation will be aware that King Charles and Queen Camilla arrived at Westminster Abbey ahead of the Prince of Wales and the Princess of Wales and their three children. And there was a short delay. It was suggested by the improbably named plastic faced Omid Scobie that this delay was occasioned by a consequence of the misbehaviour of the Wales's children. Now, George at the time was elsewhere, as he had a separate role. Charlotte is a little bit older, so the clear inference is that it was loose cannon Louis who was playing up. Now, there is no way that Omid Scobie could have known this. He is very much on the outside when it comes to the issue of the Waleses. They will know about him, and quite probably Big Willie Stiley has occasionally thrown darts at a photocopied face of Omid Scobie, possibly even having a balloon made so it could go pop in the same way that Scobie's face would go pop if it was, re if it was near any heat source. The fact is, nobody amongst the whales it would give any information whatsoever to Scobie. And therefore, for Scobie to suggest that there was some kind of boo-ha-ha -ha going on amongst the whales' children, which occasioned a delay, is utter horse shit. Indeed, the cow that you might be able to see in the distance has probably not been able to dump out as much 
waste as has come out of Scobie's mouth over the course of the weekend. Scobie had no information whatsoever, no knowledge, no evidence, and this is something that I regularly teach you to understand that you ought to go to the evidence to make a proper determination as to what's going on. And in this instance, you may well have read about what Scobie has said, but what's the evidence? There isn't any. It's entire speculation on his part. Not surprising. And of course, why then would he engage in this? Why would he, in effect, smear a child? Well, it's because he is doing so for two reasons. First, in order to get publicity and recognition for himself so that he can go on a suitable television programme and speculate without any evidential basis whatsoever that, ah, yes, the Waleses were late because the children were playing up. Secondly, he's doing it to curry favour with his mistress, the Duchess of Overseas. It might be, as a lieutenant, he's doing this of his own volition so that he can pant down a phone or in an email, oh, oh, mistress, I've been ever such a good boy. Please let me sniff one of your oversized feet. Or it could be that he's done so as a consequence of a direction that has been received from her. And as a willing lieutenant, he has actioned it. Because after all, even though those children are her nephews and nieces, Harry's wife doesn't care about them at all, because as a narcissist, as you know, she has no emotional empathy for them whatsoever. Accordingly, either he has done of it of his own volition, in accordance with being a lieutenant, or he has taken instruction, guidance and order from her, again, as a consequence of being a lieutenant. The fact is, once again, the evidence is simple in this regard, the Waleses weren't late. King Charles and Queen Camilla were early and therefore that's all it was. A very simple explanation for the circumstances that we saw but of course Scobie has to pounce on it, nasty individual that he is, cowardly little creep that he is, to then spin something out of this occurrence demonstrating what an odious individual he is because one, what he represented was false, two, he smeared a family Three, he smeared a child or children. That tells you everything that you need to know about him, and it also demonstrates, by virtue of his position as a lieutenant in the fuel matrix of Harry's wife, precisely why he has behaved that way on her behalf. Once again, Omid Scobie chats shit, but he gets banged as a consequence of this shit chatting. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.